Welcome friends, I'm Jamin. Some of you may know, or maybe you don't, that I'm the primary maintainer of MobX State Tree. MobX State Tree is a fairly popular state management system as a kind of an alternative to Redux that wraps around the very popular MobX. MobX is not MobX State Tree, but MobX State Tree does use MobX to power under the hood, uh, it's state management. It works wonderfully for me and my team at Infinite Red and has for, for many years. We use it on React Native apps, but you can use it on React or really any JavaScript related app. And speaking of React, the other framework we're gonna be dealing with here is React. And React 18 comes with a really cool feature called Suspense. What does Suspense do? Well, I'm gonna actually cover that a little bit in my video today. So if you're not familiar with, or if you haven't used Suspense yet, uh, don't worry about it. I'll show you what you need to know, hopefully. What I wanna do is make it so that MobX state tree and suspense play really well together. After all, in your state management systems, you usually have some data that you're trying to load from a server or something like that. And you want to be able to show a loading screen or some sort of intermediate screen while that's happening. That in suspense is called a fallback component. I'm going to actually show how I would build a fallback screen and how I would handle all of that pre react 18 in suspense and then show it with suspense and how we could then hook that together with MobX state tree. And I'm going to build a little utility using chat GPT or Claude or, or some other AI that will allow us to do this a little more ergonomically. Really appreciate you coming along. Let's get started. Let's open up code sandbox and start a new react TypeScript sandbox. Of course, we're going to want to add MobX, MobX uh, react light and MobX state tree. Uh, that will allow us to connect up and create an actual MobX state tree model and connect it to React. Okay, and for now, we don't need that uh, screen on the left, so I'm gonna hit Command B to move it off my screen. Let's say that we have an app that lists the current roster for the Portland Trailblazers. So I'll put Portland Trailblazers here, and then right here we wanna actually put in a, some sort of a component that will load in and display the current roster. So let's call that roster. We have to build that, of course, function roster. For now, we're going to just return a an or, unordered list, like a bullet list, uh, with some dummy data. Get Scoot Henderson in there, the new draft pick, and Shade and Sharp. Saving that, you can see that now we have Scoot Henderson and Shade and Sharp on the right-hand side. That's a good start. ES Lint is complaining to us that we're using roster before it's defined. I don't really like that rule, but we'll follow the rules. Put it before. We, we actually want to get this information from an external source. I'm just going to copy the current roster from the, the Blazers announcement. I'm going to try Claude this time, and I'm going to ask Claude to give us a JSON file that I can then push up to GitHub, and then I'll be able to pull that back down. Claude has actually been something I've started to use a little bit more lately. I still use ChatGPT4, but Claude 2 is pretty good. It's really fast. It has a very big context, and so I've been trying it out. I do recommend that you check it out as well. So it looks like it added everybody, including number, name, position, height, and weight. We're going to pull that back in. I think I'll just create a new repository and just call it test data. We'll add a readme and create. And now let's create a new file. Paste it in and commit the changes. And if I click the raw button, it actually goes to a raw.githubusercontent.com address. So I can just grab this URL and I'll be able to fetch this data from GitHub directly, which is great for what we're trying to do. So now let's create a MobX state tree store for this. First, I need to import the types MobX state tree. And then I'll create a root store. And this will have a players property, which will be types.array. And it'll be the player model is what we're going to be putting in that array. We have to create that const player model. And if we look at what we had in the actual JSON file, we can paste this in. I think we can use the number as the identifier. So types.identifier number. Position is center, there's the height, there's the weight. Uh, and then we need to create the actual root store itself, uh, the root store instance. So root store equals root store dot create, give it an empty array. I'm going to copy in a couple of players so that we have a little bit of data. And down here where we have the actual roster, I will loop through those root store dot players dot map player dot name. And you can see that they do show up on the right hand side. So it is pulling in the players right there. In this case, we're just hard coding it in, so it's gonna be really fast. But what if we go out and request from an external API the information? Let's delete that. And back on the root store definition, we're gonna create something called an action. So actions are the only place that you can make changes to a MobX state tree store. This is why it looks like it's very mutable, like you just assign players to it, but you can, you can only do that inside of an action, which makes it a lot safer. I think as I go through this, you're gonna start seeing the power of MobX state tree and how it's Actually, pretty cool. It's been around for a long time, but it still works great. So I'll create an async fetch players action here. And we'll fetch from the URL that we had earlier. And you see here that it's in an object with a 
property of players. So we need to take that into account here. And now that we have it, we can update the store. So now we have to kick this off when we start the app. So root store, fetch players, and actually this should be in a use effect. One thing that's kind of interesting here is MobXHRE is complaining a little bit, saying that, hey, this object's protected, it can only be modified using an action. But we are in an action, but there's, there's this little gotcha. When you're using async await, as soon as you await the first time, you're no longer in an action. There's a couple ways we could approach this and make it easier. But the one that I recommend to people is to use what is called flow. Fetch players, flow. Flow will come in from MobX state tree. You can see that I imported it from MobX state tree. You give it a, a generator function. If you haven't used a generator function before, it can be a little bit weird to see, uh, but they work quite well. You put a little star next to your function name and that gives you some different capabilities. So instead of a wait, we're gonna say yield. Modify my use effect here and I refresh and nothing happens. Now it's not updating and that's because we need to add observer from MobX React Lite in order to monitor and observe the root store so that when something changes, it refreshes. Wrap it in observer and let's import that from MobX React Lite. And on the right hand side, if I refresh, you'll see that it does pull in all of the athletes for the Portland Trailblazers Summer League roster. Now that's coming in a little too fast. So we need to introduce some arbitrary slowdown a little bit here. So I'm going to reach for uh, a little utility just called delay. I've written this so many times that I can probably write it from scratch right now. So I'm going to, I'm going to try. I'm going to introduce some delay here. Okay. And if I hit refresh, one second. So it did work. Try 1500 milliseconds and there it is. The problem is that when it's loading in, there's nothing showing here. It should have some sort of an indication that, hey, we're loading up the data. That's where suspense comes in very handy, but I'm gonna do it without suspense to start and show how that process works. First, I'm going to move this into the roster itself so that we can fetch the players within the, the roster component. Secondly, we need to check and see if the players have been loaded yet, and if not, show something else. There's a few ways we could do this, but I'm going to just check to see how many players have been loaded. And if there are no players, then we'll show a loading icon. It's not perfect. It's probably not what you would want to do in a production app, but it'll work for this demo. So I've added a div wrapper and then I check to see if there are any players. And if so, I load this up. Otherwise I return loading. I do need this loading component. So let's create that now. And now when I refresh, I see loading and then they pop in pretty basic. You get the idea. So this is how you would normally do this, but what if there was a little bit better way to handle this? And that's where suspense comes in. So the first thing we'll do with suspense is of course, import it. Suspense from React. We wrap the roster in a suspense wrapper with a fallback loading. And so we've, we've simply wrapped that roster with this fallback uh, and the suspense uh, wrapper. That means that we can get rid of this code entirely. So let's get rid of that and that. But if I refresh here, you'll see that there's no loading sign. That's because we need to do a little bit more. What we want to do is just remove this use effect that will allow us to call read on it. And then that read function is going to actually throw and it's going to throw a promise. It's a little complicated, but basically when we throw our function will just exit right here. It will never actually get to this part right here. And instead it'll be caught by the suspense function, which wraps it. And then suspense will then load the loading component. That's how that works. You call this read thing. It throws this promise. Suspense will show the loading screen. When that promise resolves, then it will come back and, and show the re-render and show the roster. In order to provide this read function and convert this action into something that works with suspense, I'm actually gonna ask Claude to do this. If this doesn't work, I'll try ChatGPT. So I'm going to ask it, here's an action in a MobX state tree store. Please convert it. And I'll actually just drop it in right here. Notice I didn't give it the whole thing. Please make has a suspense, for example, with read method. Let's just see if it knows how to do that. I don't know if it does. And that is not what we're looking for. I'm not all that happy with that response because I know this is not what we're looking for. We need to be, re we need to be throwing a uh, promise and that's not doing that. So let's see if GPT-4 can do a little better. Yeah, this is already looking better. Okay, looks like it has it. Just to explain what's happening here, we hold on to the status in just a local variable. We also have a reference to the result. Then we fetch and instead of awaiting or yielding here, we just grab the promise that has been sent out put a couple of things on here, like making the change to the status variable to success or error. And we also set the result that it can be returned to players or error. We return our object, which again has that read 
method that we were asking for. If status is pending, we throw that suspender. So throwing that promise so it can watch it and know when it's done. Or if there's an error, then it just throws the error. If it's success, then it actually sets the player's store and returns that result as well. I also had to convert this back to just a normal, not even async, not flow action because I needed to return an object and not a promise in this case. In order to do that, we do need another action block, actions, set players, new players, store.players equals new players. And then instead of store.players equals result at players, we will use this set players. So that just ensures that it's done inside of an action like it's supposed to. The last thing we need to do is make sure that if there are some players already, that we just return those right away. And then we just simply return those. So return store.players here. Still not working and I'm not totally sure why. I can see that it's just blowing up my, my console here and I'm not totally sure why because it is throwing that. Okay, and then we reintroduce our delay function here and we make sure that we are setting the players. Once we have the players, we can just return without the result if we don't have an error. We're gonna pull that from the store anyway. It does give me a warning about each child in a list should have a unique key property. So let's do that. Key equals, and it seems to have worked. It's loading everything in. It's showing the fallback. The problem is this is kind of awkward. Like to figure all this stuff out was kind of finicky. You know, it was like you have to be tracking the status and the result and, and making sure that you're returning the right object and, and throwing promise and, and making sure that the promise is doing all the right stuff. This feels a little too awkward. I'm not really gaining anything. I'm going backwards actually, even though the ergonomics down here are pretty cool, not up here. I had the idea, let's go ahead and build a little helper function that can help us do that. Let's call it suspend flow. I want to use the flow after all. With mob X state tree, I want to describe to it what I'm trying to do and see if it can come up with the answer. I'd like to create a helper function. It will be a general purpose function for mob X state tree flow actions that handles all the go between for the suspense co component. The final action will look something like this. So this is gonna look a lot like that flow generator that we started with. So I've given it sort of the end goal of what I'm looking for. More or less, I just check to see if there's already players there. And if so, I just return saying, hey, we're done. Otherwise I do this yield instead of await because we're in a generator function, fetch the data, pull it out using JSON, and then just simply update it. The idea behind this is suspense flow would then handle everything else. It makes it so much easier to read and it would still work within the suspense boundary like we want it to. So let's see what it does. So it accepts a generator function as a parameter, returns a new generator function that does the same thing as the original function, but also tracks its status and wraps its return value in an object with a read method. Well, let's see if this works. Um, but before we do, I'm going to ask it to give me the TypeScript types as well. I, I want this to have types. So let's paste that in and we will export this. It does not like this. So I'll just give it the type error that we got. Let's try that. And it sure seems like TypeScript is liking this a little better. So let's see if we can import it in the other file. And I think I misspelled this. Is it suspense flow or suspend flow? Let's rename the file. And now let's try doing this a little bit simpler. So we don't need to return this read thing anymore. We can just simply return. This will be a suspense flow. It'll be a generator function. Don't need any of that. We can yield that. Don't need that anymore. We can simply set the players and then the rest of this is all gone. None of this remains. Add another parenthesis. Hmm, got a bunch of errors here. I think the problem is that this is not actually using the flow that comes from MobX state tree. So let's ask it to do that. It should use flow. Okay, and after a little more playing around with it, I think we have a new version that should do a little better. Let's just save that one in and refresh. And indeed, we do see everybody popping in here, reintroduce our delay, and then it loads for a little while and then it comes in. So you can see that this is much easier. I'm gonna actually move this into its own URL up above. We just check and see if it's already there. If it is, we just return. Otherwise we fetch from the URL. We grab the JSON and the dot players. We add a little delay just so we can see the, the loading icon there and we set the players. All this is very natural. I mean, I'm not having to write a lot of extra code around this. And what I can do down here is just make sure that we fetch the players and dot read is there. Whenever this re-renders and it tries to read it again, it'll just say, oh, we're already good. We already have the players. We don't need to do it again. And everything should work just as it is. The helper is a little esoteric. It's clearly a little bit complicated, especially with the types, but it's still kind of the same basic shape. You have the status, which can be pending, fulfilled or rejected. You have the generator function there, which you're, you're calling with yield again, with flow again. If there's errors, it gets thrown back and, and throws that promise so that it can watch. So that the react suspense boundary can watch that and see when it will resolve. Once it resolves or, or 
throws an error itself, then it can bring it back to the main body of the function. So if I go look at that, we simply wrap the roster in suspense with a callback of loading. If the roster isn't ready yet, it'll wait. It'll throw that promise. It'll wait for a bit. We can see that for a little while it shows loading and then it loads it up and there it is. So I learned a lot about React 18 and how it handles things. I think I'll publish this helper. Maybe this will actually go into MobX state tree. That'd be pretty cool. And uh, I think it'll make working with the suspense boundary a little bit easier for MobX state tree people. If you enjoyed this video, please do subscribe. I'm trying to get it off the ground. It's really, really helpful for me. Hit that little bell button as well, because th I guess that's important or something. And also send this to a friend or post it in your Slack or something. I really appreciate it. It's really helpful. Thanks a lot. Really appreciate it, friends. We'll see you all next time.